Hi, welcome back to Make Cool Stuff. First thing I want to do is thank everybody who subscribed and liked and watched all my videos. Uh, I've, I've reached my 1,000 subscriber level, which, which allows me to monetize the channel. Uh, and, and for those who are interested, I, th I think I'm making maybe approximately a dollar a day right now. Um, I mean, that, that goes up in the summertime. But yeah, it's whatever. It's cool. Okay, today's video is going to be in response to a question that I often get on in the comments section of my other videos, and that's about whether I think it's a good idea for somebody to supercharge their their particular car. Uh, and quite often, I can tell people are disappointed by the answers I, I will give them. And and I just want to produce this video so people would have um, an idea of where I'm coming from when I when I give them what I think they need to do, what I think the limitations are on their particular vehicle's engine with regard to the amount of boost they can expect it to use and what they would have to do to increase that. So it's not just a matter of picking a supercharger and bolting it on the car. Uh, you will be, in most cases, if you think you can just like go on there and produce 50% more power, uh, that's probably not going to happen, um, not without dismantling the engine. So. Uh, boost can hurt your engine in two ways. Uh, you can get you can get failures from really two different things, and that is, well, maybe three different things. Uh, you can get what I had with my Crown Vic, my broken Crown Vic out in the driveway, and that was your piston ring gap is inadequate for the amount of heat going through it, and it binds in the cylinder and cracks the piston. It usually just breaks the ring land off. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I knew that when I when I built my engine, I I was hoping I could get away with the boost I was getting, but you know, hey, you get to benefit from my uh, my bad experience. So uh, the other thing that can happen is you can get uh, severe detonation, and severe detonation can cause damage to your your pistons in another way. It can it can burn holes in pistons. It can break pistons as well. Uh, and then you can just simply override the mechanical. The third way would be you can override the mechanical capability of the parts in your engine, the uh, the pistons, the rods, and the, the crankshaft. And usually at that point you're you're up at some pretty serious boost levels. So I'm going to walk you through what you can expect and what you need to look at with your particular engine to uh, to at least have realistic expectations. So this chart that I've I'm you'll see in front of here now, uh, I found it on the internet, and it's, it talks about, or it's, it's a table of effective compression ratios. And it basically takes the, um, the static compression ratio, which would be for a normally aspirated engine, you can, you can usually find that number uh, by going on the internet and just, you know, Google searching your engine, and quite often the Wikipedia entry will have the compression ratio there. Uh, so um, if I was to look at my uh, my Crown Vic engine, which is a 4.6 liter two valve engine, it's 9.6 to one. So if I just sort of round that off to nine and a half to one, there uh, on the left left hand side of that table, the static compression rate ratio was nine and a half to one. And if I look at the, you probably can't see this on the uh, screen, but uh, this table is advocating uh, that you should keep your for pump gas 92 octane, you should keep your effective compression ratio below 12 and a half to one. Or sorry, 12 to 1. So if I sort of say 9, 9.5 to 1 and I look at, uh, well, they've got 12.1 to 1 there, close enough, 12.1. They're saying four, 4 pounds of boost is a safe level of boost. Now, what I don't like about this chart is all superchargers are not created equal. And if you have a very efficient supercharger, you can run quite a bit more boost because it's dumping less heat into your engine. And, uh, that has a, a big uh, impact on the amount of boost you can run. So, or if you if you're running an intercooler, so that's that's really any supercharger works better with an intercooler. So that said, um, if you were to run an Eaton supercharger with um, with no intercooler, I would say probably that four pounds boost is a safe number, and I usually say four or five pounds boost. I mean, to give you an idea with my engine. 
My engine, I was using water injection to cool it in lieu of an intercooler. And I don't know if it works as well as an intercooler, but I was get I was probably getting around seven pounds of boost, and that's that's at the point that my uh, engine failed. Now it didn't fail right away. I ran that engine quite a long time like that, like many many months, uh, with lots and lots of hard uh, full throttle runs on it like that. So I would say if I had taken that down to five pounds, I th I figure I would, probably would have been safe at that level. As I say, it didn't break right away. I think the day that it broke. Um, I heard a rattle come out of the engine. I just got into the car, and the car was maybe it wasn't as warm as it should have been. It was a cool, um, a cool evening. Car probably wasn't warmed up adequately, which means that the, uh, yeah. Anyway, so I pegged it on an on ramp, going on, uh, getting onto the highway, and that's when I heard a rattle come out of the engine. So probably the, a chunk of piston flying around in the combustion chamber is what I heard. So uh, that engine. If I, with the water injection, I would, I would say five pounds probably would have been sick. I, I, as I say, I'm knocking two pounds of boost off my seven pounds that I was running to, to get to a safe level. So uh, I'm going to go to the next table here. And this is a table uh, I found on a Pro Charger website. And what's good about this particular table, they've got the, the three different curves there with the uh, the red area, the green area, and the blue area indicating the the zone of uh, the boost uh, that, that, that they're they're recommending here. So uh, if we're looking at, they've got a root supercharger, which is what an Eaton supercharger is. Uh, I've got uh, let's see, nine and a half. So the same sort of thing, and they're showing me it's just a little more than four psi. They're advocating once again four or five psi. That that's about right. That they're saying is, and general general guidelines only. Compression rate limitations may vary dramatically due to engine dynamics. Sure. Okay. Anyway, uh, if if I could have, if I incorporate a an intercooler uh, into that engine, I'm not sure I would necessarily advocate for more than five pounds of boost. Maybe I don't know, maybe six. Even then, I'm not I'm not going to go on the record as saying that's a safe level. So. And they're saying here with a, a pro charger alone, uh, nine and a half to one compression ratio, they're pushing that up to as high as, uh, looks like it's, a, I would call that eight and a half, eight and a half pounds of boost. And intercool pro charger, they're pushing that up to 15 pounds of boost. Woo! So, uh, that's what pro charger says. Uh, whether whether those numbers are are really really good, valid numbers, once again they're they're giving themselves some some uh, wiggle room here with their guidelines by saying uh, limitations may vary dramatically due to engine dynamics. Okay, so it does give you the the general idea here though that uh, Eaton superchargers are bad uh, in terms of how much boost you can run. A pro charger, which is a centrifugal style supercharger, more efficient, you can run more boost. And then when you intercool that, you intercool any supercharger, you can run more boost. So moving right along. Okay, so you've looked at the effective compression ratio chart there and determined that you know you can only run maybe two pounds of boost before your engine gets unhappy. What can you do about it? Well, I, I put that together a, a slide here showing um, engine build options that kind of make sense to me in, in order from cheapest to most expensive. And the cheapest one of all would be do nothing at all, run your stock as rotating assembly and live with whatever small amount of boost you can get out of it. So that one you already know about and that's probably going to be, with a lot of people, that's going to be uh, all they can do because they don't have the mechanical skills. Or the workspace to or even the money to to do anything else your next option would be to dismantle the engine pull the engine out of the car dismantle the engine and open up the ring gaps you can either reuse the rings you've got in the engine put it back together with 
opened up ring gaps and you can find out what what your what the recommended ring gap would be uh, by going online and, and a lot of piston manufacturers will give you good numbers there uh, it'll be substantially more ring gap than um, what what was on a your your stock ring gap with your normally aspirated engine and keep in mind when you do that you'll probably want to put new seals and gaskets in it and a lot of engines these days are, are assembled with torque to yield bolts so you have to replace all the bolts as well as head gaskets as well so you're, you're into a bit of money there I think um, I did I did an engine build a couple years ago and it wasn't a, a boosted engine but it was the same thing I was actually building a high compression uh, engine at the time and so I put different pistons in it and had to hone it and new rings opened up the ring gap as well. And I think that ended up costing me for the Ford 4.6 ended up running me about a thousand dollars Canadian for that was you know using reusing the rods and, and new pistons. Uh, I didn't uh, I didn't uh, do any engine machining at all other than Honing, honing the cylinders out and that's what that costs so your next option past that would be to do the ring gaps and put in low compression pistons and with that you'll it's all the same thing new seals gaskets torque yield bolts what you need to look at there is you need to use the same kind of piston so for instance uh, and this is very common these days uh, engines use hyper eutectic pistons which is uh, better than a cast piston uh, not as good as a forged piston uh, it's uh, very very common out there in engines today and if you get that you want to get a piston that is also a hyper eutectic piston with a lower compression ratio on it and you, you've without going into all the part numbers that would, would be required it's something you'd have to look into so um, not not too hard to come by with a uh, a Ford uh, 4.6 there's lots of options out there on on different pistons and usually what happens is they they dish the piston out so you've got a bigger um, you've got more space more volume in your com your combustion chamber uh, and you'll be into the as I say if you don't if you can keep the weight of the pistons the same as your stock pistons you won't you won't need to balance the, the rotating assembly um, and that's what I did with my high compression engine build so past that, uh, the next most expensive thing to, to do would be to go forged pistons. And at that point, you might as well go forged rods because you got to balance the thing anyway, balance the rotating assembly anyway. So, uh, and I think this is what I'm probably going to do with my, for, my Crown Vic in the driveway with my broken engine is do forged pistons and rods. Uh, the crankshaft, the engine builders out there are, are specking their engines with, with the, the factory cast um, crankshaft up to 600 horsepower so all right that should be good enough for me so uh, the a forged crankshaft is a fairly expensive item but you know if, if it's if it's not or if your engine already has the forged crankshaft in it um, that's also something to keep in mind is some better of the better engines out there will have forged components in it forged pistons forged rods forged crankshaft that's something you have to determine on your own if you've got those parts great Maybe you just got to do uh, forged pistons, and 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 maybe you won't even have to balance the rotating assembly if if the weight of the pistons is very very close and in, in, to the weight of the stock pistons. So I think that's that's really your options out there uh, with regard to uh, if you want to if you want to go with a higher boost level than what your stock engine will will allow. So. Uh, you know, for me, for instance, if I if I just wanted to get my car back together really, really quickly, I would just phone up the wrecker and get a, a wrecker engine delivered for, say, $600 or maybe even less. Uh, take it apart, uh, do the ring gaps. If I, did, if I didn't do the pistons, I could probably just bolt the whole thing back together with the new ring gaps and the new gaskets, put it back in the, in the car, and I could run it more or less with the same levels of horsepower that, that broke the engine in the first place. But it wouldn't break this time. At least it wouldn't break from a, a ring gap issue. So, but something like that. The pistons are pretty cheap for these engines, so it's it's worth spending the extra couple hundred bucks to do the, the pistons, in, in my view. 
And if you do, if you go with low compression pistons, you can probably make more power. And you, what you will also be able to do is your engine will be more um, forgiving of a bad tune. It's not, it's not just going to detonate itself to death, really, really, you know, with just a, a little bit more too much uh, ignition timing. Uh, it'll be more flexible, more forgiving. That's worth considering. So anyway, I hope that sort of answers some of your questions and, and explains my, my thinking and my rationale for why I advocate such low boost levels with uh, you know, an Eaton style supercharger. It, it really just comes down to not breaking your engine. Uh, what, what's a safe level to run without breaking it? And these, uh, I didn't come up with these values and I can, I can say uh, from my own experience, yeah, you, you do need to look at them or, or you end up like I did with a broken engine. So anyway, hope that helps. Thanks for watching.